for me personally, this project, it's about helping as many young people and anyone, because I realized that we have a diverse age group. I started out thinking it would be a project for 25 to 35, but people have totally made that impossible for us to a large extent. We've managed to sometimes not select, which is how we select sometimes. We use the age parameter to select. But the goal is to help us unknot some knotty points, to uh, help us set some value systems, to help us understand that life is not accidental, to ensure that you know that you need to be a lot more deliberate about your life and how you live it, and to understand that every action has a consequence, and that in deciding to act one way or the other, to understand the consequence of the actions that you take and extend that to the rest of your life. Normally, I make them do an exercise that involves getting to the point where you look back, you look at your life so many years ahead and you dream of how you want your life to look if you were reviewing your 70-year-old or 80-year-old self. And then identifying the gap between where you are now and that picture that you want. And then setting the strategy that helps you to achieve what you need to achieve in order to have the life that you want your life to be at 70 or 80. Because the power to make decisions and to take actions, yes, yeah, some things will happen along the way, but if you have a plan, you will always reset and reorganize yourself to still achieve the goal that you set out to. So, if you are in here today, I want you to understand that this is not a social event. My friends and I are very serious people and our time is expensive. But there's not a single person that is charging for the time they're giving today. Well, Adeshala is sitting here. She wasn't supposed to be back in town. She flew into town to be here today and to leave town again. So when you get that kind of value from people, I expect you to take, make the most of it and run with it. Now, we have a lot of testimonials from those that have been part of the sessions. Oh, and by the way, we had a male-only session in September, and that was very interesting. It was all men, but I had two gentlemen that were my guests. The MD of NLNG and the Chief Responsibility Officer for MTN. Two amazing men who were very open, very vulnerable in sharing their lives their experiences, their relationships, and how they got here, and being truthful in engaging the men about their mindset. The whole goal of this project is to help reset mindsets in a way that by resetting your mindset, you can move forward against all odds and beat the circumstances that are limiting in our environment. Nigeria has many factors that you can get overwhelmed by, but the reality is there are many successful Nigerians. So what you must say to yourself is, how are they able to succeed in Nigeria despite the same issues that you see? So what I always say is, you must think of how do I succeed despite, not how I will not succeed because. How I will succeed despite is different from, from why I will not succeed because. But it's about how you think. It's about how your mind is set. It's about how you look at a situation. It's a matter of the cup is half full or is half empty. It's the same cup, same content but two views, 
So what we seek to do is to challenge your view in a way that will help you to reset the way you look at things so that at the end of the day, you can look at things differently in order for you to be able to achieve your goals. There's some things we take for granted or we think are Nigerian factors, like your value system. But to, in today's world, if you are not a global citizen in your mind, you're limited. Look at the current trend. Oh, some people are going to Canada, they're going to this. I don't mind Nigerians going anywhere because they're more than enough of us. And there's an economic value to Nigerians moving to every part of the world. If you have enough Nigerians in diaspora, we don't need to sell oil to generate foreign exchange because they will repatriate money. The money will benefit the economy. Their families will benefit from it, and the whole economic cycle will benefit. There are countries whose whole effects generation for their country is from their diaspora people. Philippines, India, go and check what percentage of their GDPs come from repatriated funds. So I don't mind Nigerians going anywhere. I just know that if you're a Nigerian who has skills, but has not allowed yourself to develop the habit of working with the right value system, if you then get up and go to Canada, you'll end up in jail. Why? Because you're not used to doing things right. And your practices and your habits will show up somewhere and it will destroy the talent and the gifts that you have. So, oh, it's a Nigerian factor. No. The smart person of today will know that we live in a global world and you're better off resetting yourself every day to be competitive globally. If you're an entrepreneur, with the use of social media or social platforms, you can sell your goods to any part of the world. So what does that tell you? You must have a mindset of excellence and a dedication to quality. Even if your market is just Nigeria, when a foreign investor comes knocking and looking for opportunities, he's not going to consider you based on Nigerian values. He's going to consider you based on accepted values. So you might have the right product, the right market, but you might be the wrong person because you have the wrong practices. So you need to choose who you want to be. You must decide where you want to go. And you must decide how far you want to go. And the preparation for who you will be 20 years down the line is from now. People don't change overnight. So if you play with the wrong practices now and say, oh, when I get to this size, I will start doing the right thing, you will not know how. So your values are important and they're key to your ability to succeed and succeed in life. Every day of your life that you're living, you're living on a stage like I am on a stage right now. There are people watching you every day. You don't know them, not necessarily. Some you do, many you don't. You have an invited audience observing and watching your life. Why is that important? At a critical moment, they will speak for you or they will speak against you. What does that then tell you? Be deliberate about how you live. Who is your biggest brand manager? You. Every day. How you engage with people. What impression do you leave behind? Are you deliberate about how you are perceived? Or the impression you leave in how you act? One person that you're badly behaved to might be a point of contact three points down. 
And three points down might be your greatest place of need. And then that person will speak for you or speak against you. Like I said, my friends have given up a lot of time to be here today. And for every single one of them, it's valuable time given for free in order to bless you. So I'm hoping you're as prepared as they are. And as you can see, they're fashionable too. <laughs> so this is a fun day for me because honestly, it's one thing to think this is something that you feel God wants you to do. It's another thing to execute in the smaller model and test out the idea. And it's a totally different thing to be forced to do it on a bigger scale. Because all I wanted was the 200 people in each group and a heart to heart. And that was very, very enjoyable and satisfying. So I want this to be as enjoyable, as satisfying as it is impactful. And the only way that happens is that every one of you is fully engaged, will take the most from the value that they have brought. You will ask the right questions, no stories, no tales. You know, let's maximize time for everyone. Our programs are very interactive, so I want you to engage. And at the end of the day, I want you to go away as an ambassador. Today's program has largely been put together. All the work was done by some of my young mentees and a number of people who had been part of the life series, the ones we had in the quarters. I have 57 volunteers, young women, who volunteered their time to put this together. I know that they're all over the place doing different things, but somewhere along the line, I'll introduce them to you. And I'm very grateful for my errands and my oars that they have been in terms of uh, making sure that we can do this. <laughs> <laughs>